can't talk long today because I'm going out. I'm going ice skating. Yay! Yesterday I made my own certificate through the mental health system. I've got little certificates for this little education class and that little education class and created my own. And maybe I'll create more, but this one says Certificate of Trans Consciousness. This certifies that Womanic Wonder Whore has successfully labeled herself Shit Disturber in Chief. Signed, The Universe. So I'm not sure. So this certificate is mainly about labeling, creating my own label to unfold my life. Shit disturber in chief. And I also gave myself an alter ego name. Womanic wonder whore. So woman, I see, as in manic, and wonder whore. Because I'm a whore of wonder, I'm always wondering. And it's also a play on words that a lot of women are just thought to be whores and I'm just gonna re-own that word. Last night I had a dream and I don't remember dreams very often or I don't dream very often, but I dreamt that I was hanging out with two bears and we were even like rustling around and playing around. And then later in the dream I was on a street and this bald guy was running towards me and I sort of effortlessly I just realized who the bald guy is. But I grabbed his hand and I effortlessly swung him in a circle and then threw, let go and he sort of skidded along the ground and hit his head on the side of the sidewalk. And I think I wrote somewhere once that the bear is my power animal. And I wasn't sure about that, and I couldn't find where I typed it, but maybe it is my power animal. And I wonder if the most important thing is the light coming out of our eyes. The quality of that light, the consciousness of that light, that might be what is healing. So it could be about, can I look with love in this situation? And maybe a good practice would be to put things in front of us that we can love unconditionally. And maybe that's where we can actually stop the need to focus. Because when we're focusing, we're looking for something. But when we've found the something that we're looking for, we don't need to focus anymore. We just relax and enjoy. We don't need to do, we don't need to strive. And what we're looking for is the thing by which we look, which is looking with unconditional love. So if we're not at a place yet where we can look with unconditional love, our focus is going everywhere and, and we're saying, well, we can't focus because we're going everywhere. The path of least resistance is to look at that which we can love unconditionally and then expand the range if we choose to, if we want to focus on other things, if there are other things that we actually do want to do once we find that which we can look at with unconditional love. Maybe those are the friends that are the best, the ones that we can look at with unconditional love, that we can just be around, that we're not 
judging and dividing ourselves from. We're just enjoying, we're just relaxed. I was thinking about how in Sean Blackwell's videos, in one of them he talks about how when slavery still existed, if a slave ran away, the slave was said to have a mental illness with some kind of name related to a slave running away. And I feel like map consciousness, trans consciousness is similar. It's consciousness or the brain becoming aware that it's a psychological slave, that it's a slave to its thoughts and and it tries to move away from that. The thought process has changed and one is moving into the new and moving away from the old. And that other consciousness tries to get us to move away from ourselves and society. And then when we're captured, we're called mentally ill. We're labeled as mentally ill when really we've just seen that we're slaves to our psychology. A slave would have an advantage because they know they're a slave, whereas we don't even realize that we're slaves of our psychology. Consciousness is trying to free us from the slavery of thought. The slavery of thought that keeps us wandering around in a very small f portion of the field of reality and we feel like we're free, but we're not. And mania is a brain hack. The universe is hacking into our brains. Instead of the thoughts and the me thinking through the brain, it's the universe thinking through the brain. And that's a different energy filtering through it than the limited energy of thought. It's trying to free us from that. My brain has gone into a hyper metaphoric state I see metaphors everywhere I look. I also realize that we're not our personalities, so to deal with anything on the level of personality is an illusion. The personality is designed to be a convenience to help us live the life that we want. But it's just software and we're conditioned to think that we are that software. We have this very limited band of personality it would be the equivalent of a singer just singing one note all the time. It would get pretty boring. So it could actually be that we go into map consciousness because the universe is just bored with us. So it's just wanting to play a different song. You can play lots of different songs to one instrument. We're not even playing the same song, we're playing the same note. That would be like saying to be a successful saxophone player would be to play one note the best the mind is undergoing a mutation and everybody needs to transform and what would a manic do they would say how they see it and that's what i'm doing in self-dialogue that's what i've been doing at work a little bit and it's felt more powerful to just speak my truth in one solid hour than perhaps to try to work in the system and smile and nod for the next 10 years. As children, we're in love with life and we fall in love with life. We're love and we are life. And I think map consciousness is just intended to get us to fall in love with life again, to fall in love with our life, our life energy and how it creates. Because if we're creating from the life energy of love, we're gonna create a life that we love. And again, putting things in front of us that we can love unconditionally. And that makes sense in a way because if I was to put a steak in front of me, I can't love that unconditionally because I don't eat that. So it's not something I want to put in front of me. So remaining in the personality, remaining in the ego and seeing all the things we're judging that means we're putting the wrong things in front of us. So at least put something in front of us that we don't feel we need to judge. And that could be an entry point. Map consciousness puts us in touch with a different language. 
is the language of love. And that language comes through us like a channel as opposed to the repetition of thought. And it takes a while to understand that language, to have that language deprogram the old thought structure language we have in our head to be just an instrument of the language of the universe, to speak as the universe, to speak as Gaia, as one, because we're all part of Gaia. And we're the instruments through which Gaia can observe itself and assess its health and go around and see what's happening. I remember watching a movie about Helen Keller and it was showing how as a little girl she had this tutor who was trying to teach her how to do sign language but she couldn't see either so she had to do it in a tactile way and so this tutor was wrestling with the young girl and trying to get her to focus and trying to get her to get what she was trying to do and the little girl must have perceived this woman as a tyrant as a fiend as as torturing her and the woman was very persistent in doing the signs and getting Helen to feel the thing she was signing about to make the connection between the thing she was feeling and the thing the language she was trying to teach her in order to be able to communicate. So for that long period of time before it clicked, the tutor was giving her all this context. She was giving her all this context with her hand and touching and hand signing and touching the object and giving her context, context. But it wasn't until a certain point that it clicked for Helen. And when it clicked, she got it and she understood everything that she'd probably touched and, and the signs. But it wasn't until it clicked and so there had to be enough context in her brain for it to click. She couldn't just give her one leaf and put her hand and say leaf or however she did it and then, oh, I get it. That's not how it worked. So it was, what am I touching and what is the language associated with that. And when one decouples from the ego process, we're being touched by the universe in each moment. And we don't really understand what it is that we're, we're touching. So we're speaking and sometimes we're saying things that seem really off because we're trying to learn this new language. We're making connections that aren't necessarily there, but they feel like they're there. So when they feel like they're there, they're probably making those connections of context in our brain, even if we aren't speaking the words that are directly perfectly associated with that. But maybe we are, maybe we're speaking about these new far off associations and contexts that we wouldn't make otherwise. And we're doing that, and we're unfolding that, and we're creating that context in our brain in the experience of map consciousness. And then we come back and we're medicated or whatever. And if we go back into that, we're making more connections. And the other thing too is that sometimes in this unfolding, as we're walking through map consciousness, it feels like torture. It feels like pain. It feels like punishment. And it feels sort of like that woman must have felt to Helen. She was like, get away from me. Yet she was just this three or four year old or five year old or something. So she didn't understand that it was for her own good, for learning. There's this person like jumping on her and holding her and making her sit down and making her do things she didn't want to do. So it's, to me, it's sort of similar to map consciousness because it sort of makes us do things we don't want to do. It makes us see things we don't want to see. It makes us feel things we don't want to feel. And a lot of these things could have been the things that we didn't feel along the way because we were abstracting it away with our minds. So in a way, it's a language of reconnecting the body, mind, and heart in order to perceive in a holistic way. But in order to be able to do that, we sort of have to walk through this land of map consciousness, this 
this reorienting the inner to the outer in order for that to reconnect and to actually get the language of the body, mind, and heart working as one in each moment, which we're not used to. We're used to remaining in the center of our head so much and we don't have access to that full spectrum of our spinal cord and sensation in the different levels. Just like our voice speaks through different parts, it resonates on different parts of our spine as we speak, depending on the note. It's the same with consciousness, and since all our consciousness is being directed through the head and through mentation and, and thinking, we don't have access to this. We think we do because we think about certain aspects, like we might think about sex or something, and we think that actually is is being in that part of our body, but, but it's not because we're abstracting about it. So we're not actually sensitive to that when it actually is there. So for men, they probably think about it all the time, but they're not actually sensitive to when that opportunity is actually there for real. They try to project that and make it real and then a lot of times overstep their boundaries. And then once she understood what the woman was trying to do and she, she understood that language, she loved that woman. She didn't want her to leave. So in the same way, map consciousness, we might actually be able to step into abiding in map consciousness once we've really become sensitive with our body instrument and we can trust ourselves to live in that space. Because it's not a headspace. Of the entire spectrum of reality, most people are living in the headspace. To live in the heart space, it takes a bit more strength in a way, it takes more courage because one is going to see some things that are pretty bothersome. And the thing is too that when that happens a person can no longer participate with that. So if somebody's in a job where there are certain aspects that they find unethical for example, if you exist in the headspace you can still continue to do it. You can rationalize that part that bothers your heart away. You say, well, I make money, or I've been here a long time, or whatever it is. Whereas when you connect with the heart, you can't do that anymore. So connecting with the heart is actually difficult because you have to make changes. So part of map consciousness is connecting with the heart and living in the heart and it's seeing all these things we need to change in ourselves, in the world and and it's difficult because we get to this place where we see all these things that need to change but we can't do anything and at the beginning of it we usually feel like we can do something and then by the end we think we can't and then we get the confirmation that we're just defective so we can't do anything barely at all in life except meander to McDonald's and watch TV so integrating that is about reestablishing that courage to live from the heart. And so the very thing that we think is there to try to torture us, something like so-called psychosis, is actually there to help us see and learn a different language. And I've made a lot of videos since August 6th in the last six and a half months and I feel like so much has changed in life and not much has changed physically really but so much has changed for me contextually and it could be so important to actually create all this context for oneself as oneself speaking as oneself to oneself before actually moving towards anything I don't know if that's true I've been talking to myself and creating this language within myself similar to Helen Keller having that tutor who helped her learn that language of signing and, and tactile touch. It is like we're blind and deaf as human beings and map consciousness is trying to get us to see and by talking about what I've seen and what I see from what I've seen etc I've been able to create these brain cells, I think. And I've created all this context in my brain 
And just as a tree needs a lot of roots to stay strong, it also needs the roots of nearby trees to stay strong. So one tree standing is not as powerful as, as a forest connected together.